Hello you guys and welcome to another video and another car based intro and outro. This week guys we are talking about a legend in the world of Roman road research in Britain, Ivan D. McGarry. His Roman roads researched in the 1940s and 50s is the basis of our understanding of the Roman road network in Britain today. We're going to do some field work and we're going to see if the Roman Gazette can add some value to his mighty tomb. And we're also going to talk about another YouTube channel that I like. I don't think he likes my videos very much, but I like his, so I'm going to give him a mention in this vlog as well. Since filming that intro, we've made an amazing discovery, so I've changed the name of this vlog to something more dramatic to get likes and subscribes. It's now called Discovered Roman Bridge Abutment. Here it is. This is my copy. Uh, this is the 1967, I think it is, revised edition. I think that's the last time he revised it. So this is my copy of that legendary work. It's mine. It's mine. Let's get started on this then. So uh, this is what re relates to where we are at the moment. Fences and traces of the road mark it onward past Swan's Farm to Iver, crossing the Holmhurst Beck just to the left of the present bridge. And it's that crossing that I want to go and take a look to. Sorry about the digitalization, guys, but I've had to use the uh, zoom at maximum reach in order to find the Roman road. Can you see it there? Oh, it's focusing on my finger. Uh, I'll, I'll put some state-of-the-art technology on to show you where it is. You can see the road coming down off of the fells. The track behind me is on the line of the Roman road. There's a sign for Swans that was Swans Farm in uh, McGarry's day. And you can see the how the crossing has drifted to the right. The Roman road would have gone straight here, crossing the beck at this point, somewhere about here. Now it's really important to focus your YouTube attention spans on this point, this concept of the crossing point of the river or the beck drifting to one side of the Roman crossing. Once Rome withdrew and the army left Britain, everything fell to pieces. The fantastic infrastructure that the Romans had created was squandered and left to rack and ruin by all of those peoples who came after, the Anglo-Saxons, the Vikings, etc. And that's why you see this repeatedly on Roman roads. The Roman bridge crossing has disappeared and a later, less, uh, more inferior crossing has emerged to one side of it. Good old Ivan was bang on when he said the Roman crossing was to the left and there's lots of it left. You can see all the stonework and you can see the abutment. And if we come round up there, there's the agar, which dives under the wall and then merges with the modern road at that bend that you can see. And then on the other side of the bet, we can see the abutment there as well. Ivan was absolutely spot on with that that double trunked tree is growing on the top of it. Oh, I got that wrong, it is still called Swan's Farm. Now, Ivan is a modest chap, was a modest chap, he's obviously long dead. Uh, he does acknowledge that for this route, Ribchester to T-Bay, uh, M7C, uh, that he was used, utilising the work of a Mr P Ross in 1914. To quote Ivan, he says, full use has been made of this, supplemented, of course, by up-to-date visiting. And that's what the Roman Gazette is doing today, some up-to-date visiting. Now, the bit I'm really interested to check out and update is regarding the crossing at Crossdale Beck. The Ordnance Survey, they've got it all wrong, those so-called experts. They just show the line going straight across at this point, and I'll put some sort of overlay up to illustrate how wrong they are. Let's see what Ivan said. Uh, the present road comes onto it at the inn in Logill, no longer there, and follows it for 600 yards to near the Crossdale Beck. A hollow way marks it near the Beck and beyond. I presume he's referring to this uh, actual lane here that he's describing as a hollow way, where there are remains of a culvert. I've heard about that, never been able to find it. And then after crossing the present road near Knot Hill, the agar is seen in a, in a rough field. So the Ordnance Survey think it goes straight on. Ivan says it's dropping 
winding down. We'll just check first of all the Ordnance Survey's assumption that the road goes straight on. There's very little evidence of that here in this field. Maybe possibly some earthworks there, but I am not convinced. I think the Ordnance Survey have got it wrong again. I think this is the Holloway that McGarry is referring to. You can see it dropping down behind me. And as a test of our uh, attention spans, remember what we said earlier about how the later crossing tends to drift to one side. And I think you can see that down at the bridge. I think it is safe to assume that the Roman crossing is to the left of that. But there is something interesting at this point, which I have previously found. I may be completely wrong, just like the Ordnance Survey always are, but let's go and have a look. Ivan doesn't mention anything about this, and uh, the Ordnance Survey don't acknowledge it, but what is it? Let's go and take a look. Ooh, ah, ah. To me, this has all the hallmarks of being a Roman bridge abutment, and I've missed timed the walk by, but I'll just push on through. Roman roads frequently get bypassed in the Dark Ages. And this is a real interactive sequence. We're gonna walk along this high raised embankment. Now, if it is the abutment to a bridge, it was a very high bridge. So I might be talking utter <laughs> You can see it really is quite a height. But look at the profile of it, it looks like a Roman road. The dimensions, the agar, everything about it feels like a Roman causeway. I've come down to the bottom now so you can see something of the scale of it. It is massive, but it does look like a bridge abutment. Could there have been a timber or stone bridge running off of that and crossing Crossdale Beck here? The Ordnance Survey missed it, Ivan McGarry missed it, but the Roman Gazette found it. This surely has to be the Roman Bridge crossing at this point on M7C. By the way, I did speak to a farmer once locally and he thinks it's that as well. I don't know if I'm right about this, but I think I am. I think it's one nil Roman Gazette to the experts. <laughs> Back at WC21 UK Productions Limited HQ, my home, I'm perhaps feeling less cocky about it. The more I think it through, I don't really understand why the Romans would have undertaken such a massive feat of engineering to cross that river. But what is that structure? I don't know. And it certainly looks like a Roman road on the top. Possibly the river has swept away some of the landscape. Maybe that is the road and it used to terrace down. Anyhow, whatever it turns out to be, and I'd invite all experts, antiquarians, vloggers who think they know about this stuff to leave their comments down below. And if you actually do know about that area, uh, maybe we could get together and do a return to the Roman Bridge abutment. Now, it is hard work getting these YouTube channels off the ground when you're way past middle-aged. And I just wanted to do a quick acknowledgement for one that I've recently discovered that's really good. It's called Allotment Fox. I'll put a link in the description down below if I can work out how to do that. He covers really interesting stuff. You'll love it if you're into Anglo-Saxon charters, parish boundaries, and Old English. He's really good at it. He does watch this channel. I think it annoys him, but we appreciate his support. But even dear Ivan gets it wrong. He has M7C running the other side of Hill House up there, but it is actually here. And for once on this road, there are quite clear surviving earthworks to show that. We expect the Ordnance Survey to get it wrong, but we don't necessarily expect that from McGarry. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Please like and subscribe. I really need to boost my pension with some monetization of this channel. Until next time, stay safe and stay tuned. Have you heard all this talk about banning the use of Roman numerals? Not on my watch. <laughs>
Actually, I'd never noticed before, my watch doesn't have Roman numerals. <laughs>